Hey, how's it going, everybody? I'm Flinger, and today we're going to be talking about where to find all of the resources for everything that you need on Scorched Earth map. Now, I'm going to be doing this on Ark Survival Evolved, so where everybody on Ark Survival Evolved knows, but also, hopefully, a lot of this carries over to, or to um, ASA or Ark Survival Ascended as things come out. So, hey, let's jump into it, and let's start talking about the most important thing is water. When it comes around to harsh death, desert landscapes water is one of the most important things all right so opening up your map uh let's go into here now this entire ravine that i'm standing right in the middle of all the way from the top all the way down to the south has little um kind of mud puddles or small little lakes or watering holes just kind of strewn all the way through it but there is a couple other different ones uh, namely, all the way at the end of this one is a rather large one. And then also, if you're really desperate for water, one of the easiest things you can do is look up and see if you can actually see one of the obelisks. The obelisks always have water there. But then again, also remember that all the water always has um, oh, capros in it. So be very, very careful. Don't just run up and grab it. Take a look at the water before you go up and you take a drink out of it because chances are there is a Capro hiding in there. But also just remember either go to the very center ravine of the map or go to one of the obelisks in the distance because you will always find water in one of these places. And also remember when you are down and you uh, need just a little bit of oil, oil bugs, once I can actually click on this thing. All right. Oil bugs will actually give you a pretty decent amount of oil. I mean, it's not a super huge amount, but it will give you uh, quite a bit. And also the water bugs, the blue ones down there, they'll actually give you a free drink of water. And it's determined how much they give you by how full their butt is. And you look at it and you go, oh, hey, that's a big butt. Well, you can pop off and you can take a drink right out of there. Uh, slurping sounds not included. That's up for you to add. All right, the next resource is cactus sap. Now, this stuff is kind of all over in certain areas. You pretty much just have to know where to look. But if you look for any of these cactuses, and then also uh, these cactuses, and then there's the ones that are on the ground, which actually add quite a bit. Now, if uh, for harvesting these things, uh, if you harvest it up with your pick, it'll actually refill your water while you're harvesting. Or if you just want to punch it, you can get that as well. But the stuff on the ground... If you smack it with, say, like a uh, Morella Tops, you get a huge amount. And I'm going to go show you what that stuff looks like here in a sec. Placed all over the ground, it looks like this stuff right here. Quite a bit of it. All right, now, now that we're here, we're actually going to be talking about one of the next things, is sap. Now, these little uh, purple flower are not sap, silk. These little uh, purple flowers right here, you can harvest these and get silk out of them with either a whip or with a sickle. Pretty dang effectively. You get a lot of silk that way. So if you, uh, you can also get silk from uh, the, oh, Lamantria, the uh, um, bugs, the mods that are floating around as well. But they're a little bit trickier. Uh, to take down just because when you smack them, they uh, stun everybody with their little green fart cloud. But this stuff right here, the purple flowers, it's ext extremely easy to get a lot of uh, silk this way. Also remember, when you're out looking for water, you can actually get water from these little water veins while you're out and about. Also, you can get and you can put water uh, structures on top of them to pull the water out of them. Now for sap, what you're going to need to do is there is a certain type of tree here called the Joshua tree that you can get sap from. And it's these trees right over here located here on the map. Also, they're kind of interspersed um, along uh, at kind of in this terrain right here. Not in the deserty terrain, not in the rocky terrain, just right in the middle of it. And it's kind of like here. Let me see if I can get some. Yeah, right there. That's how you get just regular sap. All right, now how you get crystal oil, metal. Well, metal is kind of interspersed in different areas. Uh, you can get lots of metal up in the mountainous areas as well, but also you can get a ton of metal down in the original ravine that I showed you guys earlier. Uh, just it, It's just kind of down there. Now, right here's a whole bunch of metal as we're going up. Now, up here, there's also going to be obsidian and crystal. And 
on some of the mountains, you are going to be able to find a whole bunch of sulfur. And I'll show you all what this stuff looks like. All right, up here you have obsidian and carnos that are trying to eat us. There's crystal right here. And then more crystal as well, plus also tons of metal. And I'll show you exactly where this is on the map once I can actually stop running from carnos. All right, this is actually located right here. Now on any of these large peaks, you will actually find a different concentration of either sulfur, crystal, obsidian and metal uh yeah just kind of just interspersed now the one of the best places to actually get sulfur here let me go show you that it's not this one but it is kind of close by let me get over there all right located right here on the map this one right here has a ton of salt and a bunch of sulfur and the sulfur is it's it primarily uh you get more when you harvest it with a pick uh the same thing goes for the salt as well you can harvest it with a hatchet but getting a pick or harvesting it with a pick gives you more of that primary ingredient and less stone harvesting it with a hatchet actually gives you more stone also another easy way to find salt is look for the mesas up here you can come up right here just like right i mean look for these big giant things they're actually the mesas uh, so yeah, you can just find salt all throughout down here as well, which is really really uh, helpful now Also another spot for getting uh, silica pearls. This is uh, one of the easiest ways of getting silica pearl silica pearls Excuse me in the entire game And it's right here in these puddles in the ravine right here and once again you come down here you Make sure there's no capros in here and there is a Capro in here. Alright, and that's how you take care of a Capro. And a Raptor. All right, now right down here, also there is a bunch of metal down inside of here. It's just kind of everywhere. It's like in this one right here, you've got uh, three metal nodes. It's really good. And this right here, that's your silica pearls right here on the ground. The easiest place to get silica pearls in the entire game. And Scorched Earth is amazing for that stuff. All right, and then oil nodes. You will find these as little oily rocks that are on the ground. You can actually take and you can uh, craft the extractors for them, or you can find them in loot drops. They're actually pretty common in loot drops. So yeah, uh, if you find one, just throw it down, come back to it later, and then they'll just be automatically extracting it for you over time. And it just kinda, you put it down, you access this inventory, and then you just walk away from it and come back to it later. And there's generally quite a bit. And I'll show you what those look like uh, as soon as I can find one here really quick. They're generally all over, especially when it comes around to the Mesa areas. And also another good early game uh, source of metal is right here next to the Green Obelisk. The Green Obelisk is actually a really good starting spot. It has a lot of resources that you'll need. Also, the uh, ravine that I was at earlier, I showed you guys a bunch of stuff in this video. There's also a, That's also a really good starting spot to get you a lot of really, really good resources. And one of the best places to find Ovis is right here next to the Green Obelisk. Right here on this little slope, right where I am currently at is one of the most common spots for Ovises to spawn. And then also, right here where I'm at as well, is also one of the places where you get Thylacolios to spawn. This place right here, I have actually uh, started calling this the Thylacolio Triangle just because there is so many Thylas that spawn around here. If you're looking to get a Thyla, uh, just come up here. There is so many of them that they will just constantly respawn. You can start on this section of the uh, uh, Mesa looking at right here and just work your way all the way around to the left coming around clearing all the low-level phylas that you see and eventually you'll find a really high level one 
All right, now the oil nodes. This is what they look like out in the wild when they don't have anything. All you do is take and you put your oil refinery on top of it or your oil extractor, and then it will just start pulling out of the oil for you as well. All right, now we're going to be talking about another one. We've already talked about the Thyla Triangle. There is also one that I call the Rex Triangle, which is another place where you can farm up just some of the best Rexes in the entire game. One of the most reliable ones. It's like this right here is the most reliable spot for farming up Thylas. The Rex Triangle is works the exact same way, and I'll show you the spawn spots for that. All right, now from a distance, this is what it looks like. It's way over there, that one lone peak that goes over there. That is actually one of the starts of it. And that low peak is located right here on the map. Now, starting here, there'll be a Rex right there. See, like clockwork, there's a Rex. All right, they'll, you come over this way. Uh, head directly towards that red uh, beacon right there, and there will be at least one or two more Rexes. Uh, chances are it's going to be two. See, right there on the left, there is one right there. You'll find that guy. And then right over here in this ravine, you'll find another Rex. Right there, always. And then to the left which is what makes it a triangle, you'll we'll find another Rex. See, right there. And all you do is just kill them and then uh, let them respawn. And there's another Rex right there. Let them respawn and then just keep doing the triangle, go around in a loop, and by the time you get from one to the next, they'll always be respawned. It is the easiest place in the entire game to farm up extremely high level Rexes and very, very reliably. It just, uh, your uh, level of success just depends on how long you want to run around and do it. Sometimes it's taken me hours to get the levels I want. Sometimes it's the, the very first try. It's just knowing exactly where they spawn. That's the hardest part. And same thing with the Thylacoleo Triangle. You'll find really, really high level ones there as well. Unless if they change it for ASA, which I really doubt if they did. They didn't change much when it came to the island. All right, so that is the majority of... Well, actually, that's all of it. Um, also, there are some caves if you're looking to get crystal and obsidian, but the ones I showed you were actually a little bit easier. So, hey... And my guy just won't look. There we go. All right. So, hey, I hope this video helps you out with uh, finding everything. And, uh, yeah, hey, here's looking forward to uh, Scorched Earth when it comes out. And, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the video. If the um, video helped you in any way, make sure you hit that like button. I really appreciate it. If you're new around here, subscribe. And until next time, this is Flinger. And take it easy, everybody.